clonal evolution is a kind of interesting topic in a number of hematologic malignancies at the moment. In CLL, it's known that, that patients can often have subclonal mutations in important genes like TP53. Um, and that the importance of that is that if you don't detect these uh, mutations, you treat a patient with chemotherapy, these mutations tend to be the predominant clone at relapse. So what happens is there's selective pressure of therapy. Um, the cells that are chemotherapy resistant, i.e. those with a TP53 mutation, survive. And then those clones expand and cause a relapse. Uh, this is important because we now have therapies that, that act in a TP53 independent manner, like ibrutinib and venetoclax. Um, it's also been shown that uh, there are cytogenetic subgroups in, in addition to subgroups that can be uh, determined by uh, gene sequencing. Um, and that patients who get chemotherapy who didn't originally have, for example, a 17p deletion can relapse with 17p deletion. Um, so with patients who are treated with ibrutinib, um, even though patients with 17p deletion do well initially, they're at higher risk of relapse. Um, and we were interested in determining uh, do patients during treatment with ibrutinib have expansion of high-risk subclones like uh, clones with a 17p deletion and in particular patients who maybe didn't have a 17p deletion at the start who then relapsed could you identify a 17p deletion at, at relapse and that's actually what we found so generally we found that subclonal architecture as, as assessed by fish um, rather than by, by um, sequencing was fairly stable during treatment um, but at relapse patients who didn't have 17p, dele uh, p deletion initially uh, often had 17p deletion detected. We also looked at metaphase cytogenetics, conventional cytogenetics because that's a more broad way of looking at chromosomes in CLL and we found that patients who had carrier type complexity, which is a known risk factor for relapse uh, during ibrutinib therapy, who progressed during therapy, they often had evolution of the, of, of the um, uh, cytogenetic abnormality. So one patient, for example, had 17 new abnormalities detected uh, on chromosomal analysis at progression. Um, and there were patients who, who also had sort of notable um, clonal evolution uh, at, at progression. So it's just interesting um, because I think, uh, first of all, I'm, I think that a number of patients probably have low level 17p deletion that's not detected by fish because you have to have at least 5% of cells with the 17p deletion to be able to detect it. I think if we had more sensitive methodology, we could potentially detect these patients earlier. Now, is that going to alter our treatment? Well, perhaps not, but it, it, it may be in the future with combination therapies and things that are, that are, that are coming through, these might be the, uh, another group of patients to specifically target for those, for those treatments.